Okay, it's casual. It's casual Sunday school. I'm wearing my Lawn in London Tour 2008 t-shirt because it's going to be a warm day. We're still in Costa Mesa until next uh, Wednesday. But anyway, this was indeed a tour uh, of uh, the UK uh, back in 2018 and it was kind of sponsored by Atlantis Books in London, one of the one of the the oldest and most respected uh, occult centers in central London on Museum Street, just uh, just a few blocks from a few short blocks from the British Museum. And uh, anyway, the I had an entire I don't know if you can see the whole schedule on the t-shirt, but uh, anyway. Yes, this is what I look like today. <laughs> this is uh, what I look like today. We're, uh, believe me, this is a, a happy break from uh, uh, sort of a grueling schedule here. But anyway, we're moving forward with our moving out, so. Uh, I'll be doing this for as, as long as I can till we uh, uh, will be setting up shop in Sac Sacramento. Anyway, let's talk about the pendulums, okay? This is from chapter 12 of, uh, uh, let me tuck that thing in there, chapter 12 of uh, the Book of Ordinary Oracles. It's called The Pendulum. In the hand of a trained operator, the pendulum reads exact energy patterns, which in the final analysis is the only truth we know. And that was from Greg Nelson and Joseph Polanski's uh, comments on the pendulum. The pendulum is perhaps the most powerful and mysterious divinatory tool in the fortune teller's arsenal. It is simple to use and can perform in almost infinite ways. Did I say this is from my book of Ordinary Oracles? I forgot to mention that in my, in my uh, dereliction of my duty as a shameless promoter here. I've got a book called the Book of Ordinary Oracles. If you don't have it, you can fix that. Anyway. Uh, the pendulum is uh, simple to use and can perform in almost infinite ways. It's different than other oracles because it makes you, your body, and your electrical and psychic energy fields the vehicle for the oracular intelligence. It is an aspect of the art and science of... Now, I don't know how to correctly pronounce this. Uh, it is spelled R-A-D-I-E-S-T-H-E-S-I-A. -E -E Radius Thesia. It is an aspect of the art and science of Radio Thesia. And based upon the same principles as dowsing. By using a pendulum regularly, you become increasingly attuned to the subtle forces and more sensitive to the curious ways oracular intelligences communicate. You don't have a pendulum? Well, you can make one in about two minutes using stuff you have around the house. Most anything will do. A pendulum is just a weight at the end of a string. Tie a ring or an earring to a thread or a thin chain about eight inches long. You'll find something. If you discover you have a knack for pendulum work, you'll have no difficulty finding a wide assortment of professional quality pendulums for sale at New Age book uh, and gift shops. I've seen them for sale at health food stores. 
you need only spend a few moments with your pendulum to get a feel for it. Start by draping the end of the string over your index finger, pinching the end of the string with, down with your thumb, and letting the weight swing naturally. Then, to get it charged up and going, will it to swing in a clockwise circle. When it does, mentally inform it, or, or the intelligence behind it, that clockwise swing means yes. Repeat this little exercise a few times so that the concept of the word yes is connected with seeing the pendulum swing in a clockwise direction. Then do the same thing with word no, but linking it in your mind to a, with a counterclockwise movement. No kidding, that's all you have to do to get started using a pendulum. Once you've attuned your pendulum, the things it can do for you are mind-boggling. The pendulum's potential as an oracular device is limited only by your imagination. You can even use it in combination with other oracles, selecting tarot cards or numbers to create Yi Ching hexagrams. Use it over maps or books or newspapers, or as I do in the example that I'm about to give, Scrabble tiles. While preparing material for this chapter, I thought it'd be nice to chronicle the events of a brief pendulum operation. So I got out my pendulum, a nice brass miniature surveyor's plum, which was given to me by my uh, friend, the dear late uh, Donald Weiser. I settled into my comfy chair and quietly chanted the name of Ganesha 108 times to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. The chanting seemed to put me in a creative state of mind because I suddenly got an exciting idea. It occurred to me that the power of the pendulum could be amplified if I tied its string to the end of my magic wand. An, espe uh, an especially consecrated length of almond wood that I fashioned 30 years ago for the use in my magical operations. I thought it'd prove very handy to be able to point the wand with the pendulum dangling from the tip in certain directions and asks things like, uh, uh, did I leave my car keys in this direction? So I ask, will the pendulum, uh, let's see, let's see, oh wait, I ask, will trying the pendulum, tying the pendulum to the end of my magic wand make communication with you easier and, and uh, stronger? The pendulum swung in a clockwise motion, indicating yes. I got up and fetched my wand and removed it from its red satin bag. I tied the pendulum string to one end of my wand, which I had carved to represent its female or negatively charged end. Is this the end I should tie it to? The pendulum was motionless, a rare event. Then I tied the string to the male or positively charged end. Is this the end I should tie it to? The pendulum swung strongly in a clockwise direction. Yes! Okay, we're ready to start. But I still hadn't thought of a question to ask. Then the thought occurred to me that in all the years I had used the pendulum, I'd never asked the spiritual intelligence working through the pendulum its name. So I asked the following question. Are you the intelligence I communicate with when I use the pendulum? The pendulum immediately swung strongly clockwise. Yes. Do you have a name? Clockwise again. Yes. Will you tell me your name? Again, clockwise. Yes. Is your name... Oh, will you tell me your name? Again, clockwise. Yes. Okay, I said that. 
Is your name written in a book in this house? Again, clockwise, yes. Okay, this was great news because as I mentioned uh, in an earlier chapter of uh, Book of Ordinary Oracles, an answer from a book is the most effective way an oracle can give a clear response. But to make sure there wasn't some kind of loophole to this answer, I continued cautiously. Would I be able to find your name in a book in this house? And it says clockwise, yes. Okay. Is the book downstairs clockwise? No. Counterclockwise? No. Is it in a book upstairs in the loft? Yes. Ah, that's better. If I go upstairs with a wand and pendulum, will you point out the book? No. Ouch, I was stuck. I thought for a moment and then asked, will you spell your name for me? Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. I got up to get a uh, paper and pencil to make an alphabet chart, but then it occurred to me that out in the garage was a game of Scrabble containing a whole bag of alphabets tiles. So I went to the garage, got out the bag of tiles and returned to my comfy chair. I picked out 26 tiles representing the entire alphabet. I didn't stop to consider that the name could, <laughs> could contain more than one uh, of the same letter. I'm pretty stupid most of the time. I laid the tiles face down on the little footstool Constance had made with her talented little hands and swirled them around. Then I held the, each tile, held it over each tile and asked, is this a letter in your name? I must have been quite a sight. A big gray-haired man holding what looked like a tiny fishing pole over a bunch of Scrabble tiles. It took longer than I expected but I finally wound up with five tiles that evoked an enthusiastic yes responses. I turned them over in the order they were chosen. P-H-O-C-U. I sounded out the letters and was not happy with the message. Okay, I was not happy with the message. I lifted my oracular fishing pole. Are you saying to me, fuck you? Yes. Is fuck you your name? No. I knew I was dealing with an intelligence with impish sense of humor. Just to make sure, I ask, are you sure these letters spell your name? The pen, pen, uh, pendulum confirmed it. I turned the five tiles face down and swirled them around to shuffle them. Then one by one, I held the pendulum over them and systematically asked, is this the first letter of your name? Is this the second letter of your name? Is, and I did it for all five tiles. Before I turned them over, I asked one more time, is this your name? To which the pendulum replied, yes. And th that order of the names was this. Excuse me. P O C U H. Like that. I was pleased that the consonants, consonants didn't bunch up, but it was sure a strange looking word. I held the pendulum over the tiles while I sounded out different pronunciation. Paku? No. Poke ha or poke a? No. Pook a? Yes. Finally. I said, really? Pronounced P 
Puka, like like Harvey, the invisible six-foot rabbit in the movie? Yes. So there it was. The name of my oracular pendulum friend is spelled P-O-C-U-H and pronounced Puka. But why did I choose, why did it choose those particular letters? I had to ask. Is your name more correctly spelled P-O-O-K-A? Clockwise? Yes. If there had been another O tile to choose from, would you have selected it also? No. So much for that theory. Then I thought, is that because you wanted to first say to me, fuck you? Yes. Bingo. I thank my puckish friend and put the pendulum and my wand away from the day for the day and wrote this chapter. That's it for today. Things are going to continue to be crazy, but I'm glad you're with me every morning, and uh, hope you'll uh, hope you'll continue until tomorrow. Have Sunday school dismissed. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and do well. Bye bye.